before computer software came along that allowed us to write music using mouse clicks and keyboards, the only way to get high quality sheet music prints was with music engraving. Music engraving is exactly what it sounds like. The music that was to be printed was engraved onto a sheet of metal, by hand, and backwards. First, let's figure out when exactly the engraving process was being used by sheet music makers. The first printed music was being written by hand. This would be anywhere from ancient times through the Middle Ages. Scribes would copy the music onto parchment sheets, and they would be later collected into a book. This was a very time-consuming and expensive process. Then, in 1439, Johannes Gutenberg introduced the world to movable type. It took a few years before music could be printed using movable type because printing music notation is much, much more complicated than printing plain text. At this point, music notation was a bit simpler than it is today, allowing for movable music typesets to be developed. But as music notation became more and more complicated, there was a need to develop a new way of printing sheet music. This is where music engraving makes its debut. Similar to the intaglio process, the images were engraved into a piece of soft metal like copper or lead, then inked and sent through a press to get the final image. Let's take a closer look at the process. Traditionally, an artist would start with a plain sheet of metal. I'm going to be using this block print material to demonstrate the process. First, we have to make sure the material is stable enough to carve, so I'm going to be attaching this to a piece of plywood to give it some more stability and make it easier to press later. A few drops of super glue and the carving material should be held firmly in place. I'm just using some setting spray here to help the super glue dry faster so we can move on to the next step. The next step is deciding what design we will carve into the block. Traditionally, this would be a piece of music given to the engraver. Since my engraving skills are little to none, I decided to use this treble clef design to demonstrate with. Here's where it gets interesting. Since the engraving is going to be pressed onto a sheet of paper to get the final design, the engraving itself has to be the mirror image of the final design. So I'm cheating a bit here and using a hot iron to transfer the image to my carving block. What a music engraver would be doing right now is plotting out all the staves and measures, dividing all of the measures equally so that the music will be easy to read once it's carved. They would use a compass to mark out all of the distances and a scribing tool to mark all of their important measurements. Now we come to the actual carving. Since my block is made from a soft rubber-like material, I can carve it easily with a hobby knife and gouges. However, since the music engraver would be working with metal, their tools would probably be made from a carbon steel so that they would cut into the metal plate easily. Their tools would range from something as simple as a small straight chisel-like tool to engrave the note stems and bars to a highly specialized tool called a scorer that could engrave all five lines of the staff simultaneously. The music engraver would also have other specialized tools like note head punches that would be hammered into the metal plate to produce a crisp, clear print. They would also have different punches for dynamic markings, tempo markings, and other performance notes that are commonly printed in sheet music. All of these tools would come in different sizes because the music could be printed in various formats. For example, a single part for a symphony would be printed in a larger font than, say, a pocket study score that would be printed in a much smaller font. Once the engraving is completed, it would be sent to the press for printing. Since I don't have a press, I'm going to be inking my carved block with a simple black ink that is used for woodblock printing. Similar to the inking process for an engraved plate, the ink is spread out onto a flat surface and then rolled onto a brayer so that there is an even coating of ink. The ink is then applied to the block and press onto a sheet of paper to get the finished design. If you want to learn more about music engraving, I will leave a link in the description to a great video about the subject. And as always, thank you for watching.